wake up from your phone, and shut down those displays. We all have existence. Hello Hoffman Estates, this is Savannah Moat reporting to you from Hoffman Estates High School. We have had an exciting and event filled fall here at Hoffman Estates High School. Academically, there is one quarter behind us and our beautiful autumn season will be turning to winter as snow replaces the leaves. In academics, we inducted 72 new members to the National Honor Society on November 18th, each year in the National Honor Society. There are numerous kids in Hoffman who are doing just as much or more as the NHS members to help our school or community. However, being an NHS member provides a student recognition for their hard work. NHS meets monthly to discuss opportunities to help the school or the community. All students who are members are expected to volunteer 20 hours each year. Not only do students volunteer each year, they raise money for an organization that builds wells to provide water in communities in Africa that experience droughts. So you want to join NHS. Any student with at least a 3.0 GPA is invited to apply. From there, a community of teachers <laughs> review each application and the faculty feedback decides whether the student gets in or not. Grade point average is not all though. In reality, a student with a 3.0 has just as much of a chance of getting in as a 4.0 student. What matters most is their quality backgrounds and service to the community. Every member of the National Honor Society gets the opportunity to further learn exactly how they can give back to their school and community, which helps them in their future endeavors and in becoming a productive member of society. Students are working hard getting their college applications ready and ACT prep is underway. I was lucky enough to sit down with a college and career advisor at Hoffman Estates High School and ask a few questions about what his office seeks to provide to students. So what is it that you do to aid students with furthering their education? Savannah, I think the most important thing that I need to do is to remain unbiased, um, regardless of what my personal beliefs are. I can't impose them on a student. I must take into consideration their, their wants, their needs. So if a student comes to me and says, Mr. Murphy, I'm not quite ready to go away to college yet. I think I need to start at Harper. I need to support that decision. If a student says to me, I really want to stay closer to home, but I want to go to a four-year college, then I think it's my job to provide them with a list of schools here in our state that will meet their needs and wants as far as distance, as far as the number of students that attend that school, major interest area, so on and so forth. And if a student is open to things, then I can provide um, a larger list of schools, some out-of-state schools, some schools that are in different geographic regions. But most importantly, I have to take into consideration what they want because it's ultimately their decision and they are the ones that are going to be you know, living this for the next four years or so. Mm -hmm. How can a student at Hoffman receive additional help? I think that we have um, some unbelievable resources here in our school. First and foremost, the student's individual counselor is an excellent resource that they should tap into. However, my services as the college counselor of this high school, my services are available to all students and families, even if they are not assigned to me. They can certainly they schedule an appointment with me and I can sit down and chat with them about what direction they are thinking about going into after high school. Our College and Career Resource Center is another wonderful place. Mrs. Bonnick is in there to assist students. Mrs. Henderson is our career advisor. She um, is there to assist students. We're very proud of our Schoology page. There's amazing resources. Almost every presentation that we make, whether it's in the evening or during the school day, we try to videotape that and upload that to Schoology. Our PowerPoint documents are on there. So a student can go back and reflect on some of the things that we, that we uh, presented in a large group setting, and they can kind of review in a more one-on-one -on -one personal setting, and maybe grasp that material a little bit better. All right, thank you so much for your time thank today. Thank you, I appreciate it. It was really interesting to hear Mr. Murphy talk about the numerous resources available to all students at Hoffman Estates High School and elaborate on these opportunities. For the majority of students at Hoffman don't realize they can seek out Mr. Murphy and utilize his extensive knowledge on post-secondary education options to help them with life-changing decisions. In other academic news, HHS also put together a successful parent open house in early September and senior parent college planning night at HHS, as well as a District 211 College Night and Spanish-speaking College Night at Palatine High School. Planning is underway for the incoming freshman night at 6 p.m. on Thursday, January 7th. Students will be taking their final exams on January 20th through the 22nd. 
and college advising for juniors at 7 p.m. on Thursday, February 18th, is to take place. Now here is our very own Sam Wicks with the activities report. Hi, this is Sam Wicks reporting to you from Hoffman Estates High School. I am here with Mr. Shoemaker, the assistant principal and activities director. What is the main goal for activities here at Hoffman? Uh, the main goal of activities is just to be able to offer um, different things for our students to get involved in after the school day. Uh, we believe it's important that students get involved in our community and this is a way that we can offer a lot of different opportunities for them after the school day. And how many clubs and what types are here at Hoffman? So we offer about 90 different uh, after school activities and they're divided up basically into three categories of activity. There's competitive activities, which obviously those are groups and teams that go out and compete against other schools in different um, competitions. There's the non-competitive activities, which is most of our clubs. And then we also have a lot of different fine arts programs uh, that do different productions throughout the course of the school year. So like the musical or dance show? Exactly. Uh, we have a great fine arts program and we put on many productions. We have a fall play, a musical, spring play. Uh, we have madrigals coming up this week. And then we have a variety show which any student at Hoffman can audition and get involved with. We also have a dance show um, where our students can show their dance talents. And what are some of the major events that Hoffman hosts? So we have several major events. Um, I think the first one as far as activities is the first week of school we hosted Activities Week where each one of our clubs and activities held an introductory meeting to try to get students involved. Uh, we also have a lot of activity during Homecoming Week um, when there's many different activities after school and at night. Um, we just had a community Halloween event which we put on for the community and it had a, a large turnout from, from the community. Um, and we also offer some smaller events but I think are, are also important for the community. We hosted a blood drive. Uh, we're currently hosting a coat drive and a food drive and so um, we're really trying to do activities that not only give back to the school but give back to the community as well. And how do students go about getting involved? So the easiest way to get involved, you can find out information a couple different ways. Number one, on the Hoffman Estates High School website, it has a list of every activity um, and then when they meet. Uh, the Hoffman Estates High School Twitter is a great way to find information about what different clubs and activities are doing and when they're meeting. So if you follow at Hoffman HS, um, you can find all the information there. And then just after school every day, there's going to be different announcements and Almost every day, I would say, we have a club or activity that's meeting or doing um, something after school. Are students able to create their own clubs? We've had many clubs created already this year. I think we've probably had four or five different new ones uh, that have been created over the past several months. And so basically any time a, student, a group of students has an interest, um, what they'll do is they'll come to me and say, we have an interest in starting this type of a club. Would that be possible? And then typically what we do is find a faculty member to sponsor them and help them out. And then we get that club started. Are there a requirement for how many students can be in a club to officially start it? Not necessarily. If a, group of if a group of five students comes to me and says we want to start a club, we think Hoffman Estates High School needs this and there's people that want to get involved with it, we'll market it and we'll start the meetings and see how many people come. And so, Where should students go if they have more information? So the two best places to find information would be the Hoffman Estates High School website, which is, there's an activities tab, which they can click on and find all the information about what's offered. Um, and the second place, and probably um, a better way to find out what's going on um, on a weekly basis is the Hoffman Estates High School Twitter feed. Um, all the clubs are posting their meeting times, what they're doing. A lot of times there's a picture of what's going on at their meetings, and uh, it's a, just a great way to find out information about our clubs. Oh, well, thank you for all your time. Sure, thank you, Sam.
Well, that is our talk news for the fall. Thank you for tuning in and go home. So wake up from your phone and shut down those displays.